Good evening, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a moment. And I would like, if you could, if you do hear my audio, if you can just type into your chat box that you can hear me loud and clear, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay, I want to get started here, but I'd like to make certain. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. I'm getting some feedback that we can hear. So let's go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Serena. So, um, and Dan, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody acknowledge that yeah, you can hear me. Well, let's go ahead and, and we're going to get started here tonight on the webinar. And this is going to be uh, an overview. Uh, of the Opportunity Zone, and, and I'm Tony Spandrio, and I'm extremely, you know, happy and blessed that I can present this to you tonight. So I'd like to start off with, you know, a little bit about me and myself. Uh, I know many of you I've known for quite some time, and I think there may be a number of you guys, uh, individuals that are coming on tonight that maybe do not. So let me go ahead and give you a little bit of background about myself. I have been investing since March of 2010. Uh, basically how that came about is um, my wife drug me to a, a webinar, not a webinar, but a, a, a two hour uh, seminar. And um, she uh, had uh, convinced me into going to this short little segment and uh, you know, asking if I would be interested in, in this two-hour seminar. And, of course, it was uh, based around uh, Robert Kiyosaki and everything that, uh, you know, he had. So we went to that, and next thing I know, I'm signed up for a three-day event, which I'm sure many of you have been to. Uh, that turned into then uh, getting involved in, in soon after that, in April 2010. Well, we jumped right in and started flipping houses right away and by 2012 um, I was inducted into Robert's International Hall of Fame so that was really really awesome a um, few years went by and we just kept growing and kept doing things just as we were taught and uh, uh, you know rich dad came to me and said hey you know we'd love to have you as a market market coach and a mentor and so um, Okay, so I have one gentleman that says that you cannot hear me. I uh, just want to make certain that uh, everybody is still hearing me loud and clear. Um, so if uh, you can, just uh, once again, can I just get a mic check here? Can you guys feed back to me? All right, awesome. Okay, well, Grover, I'm, you're indicating no sound, but I've got everybody else who's giving me a thumbs up uh, that they can hear me. So you may want to, you know, oh, you got it now. Great, awesome. And so for a number of years, um, I actually worked with the Rich Dad Education where I traveled all over the United States and I would be coaching and mentoring students, um, you know, all through the process. And, and it was really a really great experience. Uh, 2017, I actually created my own coaching business, uh, which is called Cashflow Essentials. And I stepped away from uh, the Rich Dad you know, Education System. And I really, you know, wanted to focus on a lot of my own fixing and flipping, of course, and, and investing. Um, just, in fact, uh, three weeks ago, uh, we got our 42nd flip here in Colorado. Uh, our goal is, is to get uh, 10 done this year. Uh, also, I'm an owner of uh, two apartment complexes, one in Colorado and one in Nebraska. And then single family rentals. So we've got 37 uh, single family rentals in the Tulsa, Oklahoma market. And we've also got some single family rentals here in the Northern Colorado area. So uh, it, it keeps us busy. Uh, it, it absolutely does. Uh, and then also in June of 2017, um, I did become an author. I did write the book Cashflow Essentials, and that is uh, available on Amazon. And we did that. 
And then uh, two years ago, I actually created a company, which is a turnkey business uh, called Oklahoma Portfolio Partners. And we basically put houses together that are, you know, set up so that they're very low, you know, to get into $45,000, $50,000. They rent from anywhere between six fifty dollars to eight fifty dollars a month. Great cash flow. And basically, we come in and totally rehab these houses. And they're practically like new. I mean, the bones are good. Everything in them is really new. So uh, I'm, I'm an owner of that. And then also, like I said, I run my, you know, my education company called Cashflow Essentials. Well, let's, let's get on with what we've got uh, uh, going on here. And um, as we're going on, we've got a number of people that are coming in. So I you know, will apologize if um, you know, I've got uh, a delay here as everybody's coming on. Okay, so let's move on. So as a disclosure, I do want to let everybody know that as of this presentation, and this is pretty uh, important, uh, the Treasury has still has not met to define many of the IRS regulations and in, in, in regards to the Opportunity Zone. They were supposed to meet on January 10th, and who knows what was going on with our government on January 10th. That's right, it was shut down. So. So as, as we go through this, you're going to learn a lot about the Opportunity Zone. And, and I think it's really something great for everybody. I, I think that it's really awesome. And I think that, that you know, it's going to be, you know, very, very helpful uh, for all of us to understand what the pros and the cons are about that. So I'm not here to pitch anything, to sell you guys anything. Information. That's what I believe in is information. Okay. Now, also, I need to disclose that I am not a CPA, nor am I an attorney. This presentation is based upon the information that I've been collecting. There is so much information through the IRS and through the Treasury that was published to the public back in 2018. You, you just, you know, you, you have to get out there and, you know, you have to look for it. And then also, uh, this is the last part of my disclosure is, is that in all cases, I don't care who the guru is who you're li listening to, you need to seek your own CPA and attorney before you invest in any opportunity zone or any qualified opportunity fund, okay? There's a lot going on out there, and I just beg of you, take the time. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like Ronald Reagan said, you know, trust but verify. You, you've got to do that, okay? It's really, really super important. All right, let's get into the topics that we're going to be discussing tonight, shall we? All right, first, we're going to be doing a review of what is the Opportunity Zone. Um, it's called Ozone. It's called Oz. There's lots of acronyms sitting out there today uh, that people are using, okay? Next, a little bit of background on the Opportunity Zone. Then we're going to jump into where are the Opportunity Zones located, and it's amazing. They're all over the place. And we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to expose that to you, okay? So who can invest in the Opportunity Zone? Uh, you'll be interested to see, you know, how that's opened up, all right? What is the time period that you have to invest in the Opportunity Zone? So that's going to be really important. Next is Opportunity Zone versus 1031 Exchange. Yeah, there is a, a lot of similarities. And there's definitely the pluses that the Opportunity Zone has over a 1031 exchange. So I think you guys will be happy to, to see what's going on there. Next is understanding the deferral of capital gains. I think that was the first misnomer I had was, oh, gee, I've got these capital gains. I can go out and invest in the Opportunity Zone. And gee, um, I'm, I'm going to have all, the, I'm going to not have to pay taxes. Well, no, you are. There, it's just a deferral. Okay, but, but, but we're going to spell that out here a little later on. Okay, next is that what kind of investments are allowed? Okay, so once you get in the opportunity zone, what's there? And you need to know what you can invest in. All right, and then last, what's going to happen come December 31st of 2026? Yeah, so you know, uh, uh, you know, and 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 Dana, you've, had, you've asked, I had a question come up. I'm trying to, to, to filter the questions, guys, to save a lot of them here for the end. But here's what's going to happen is, is that you, you guys need to make a note to go out 
and subscribe to my YouTube channel because this is being recorded and this is going to be on the YouTube channel. And also, when you go to that YouTube video, you're going to find some links that we're going to be talking about tonight. So those are going to be very helpful. So guys, yes, you want to take some extensive notes, but yes, I am going to be giving you, you're going to be getting the links and go out and like I say, subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel. Just go out to YouTube, search Tony Spandrio, and you can find me and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's move on, okay? So what is an opportunity zone? Well, it boils down to that it's an economically distressed community, okay? Once you start seeing the opportunity zone map, okay, you're going to start understanding it. And in fact, I can tell you the first thing that I was shocked was when I first learned about this, you know, that, that I have 37 houses that we own in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nine of those houses are already in the opportunity zone. I'm going, oh my gosh, that, that was really, really surprised to hear that. Okay. So, so, you know, you, you got to look at, these are the areas where, you know, you know, a lot of our public officials have, have, have gotten together, and, and again, we're going to learn more about this here. They've gotten together and said, hey, these are areas that we want to try to turn around. Number two, bring jobs into the area. They want to be able to take these areas and revitalize them, okay? So they're, asked, they're, 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 they're literally putting out there a lot of incentives that you can get out there and invest in these areas, okay? Now, third one is, is that it may be eligible for preferential tax treatment. And we're gonna talk, talk about that. What is that tax treatment that, that, that I'm talking about, okay? The next thing is, is that your capital gains is deferred if the taxpayer's investment is in a qualified opportunity fund. Now, when you go out and you're gonna hear a lot of this information about a QOF, now, I do want to explain something that you're hearing a lot about the QOF. So, 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 you know, as we get going on here, I'll tell you what, instead of taking your time right now, there's going to be a slide that's going to be appropriate for me to talk about what the QOF is. Okay. So let's wait and, and, and let's get to that. Next is, is that, that it excludes gross income post acquisition gains if held for 10 years. And in essence, here's what I'm saying, guys, is that if you purchase a piece of real estate in an opportunity zone and you hold it for 10 years, after 10 years and a day, basically the appreciation that you gain is pretty much, it's, it's, you're not taxed on it. You're not taxed on it. So there's some pretty cool stuff there, okay? All right, so... That's a quick overview of what the uh, Opportunity Zone is all about. Now, let's go ahead and let's move on and let's jump into a little bit about, about the background on uh, the Opportunity Zone, okay? So, first off, there was a company called the Economic Innovation Group. They wound up and they really started back in 2015 where they started coming up with this concept of what this was all about and how they could go into Congress, how they could get in front of a lot of the public officials there at the Capitol and say, hey, we have this great idea. You know, we think that that we can help out a lot of communities across the United States. And at the same time, you know, we can give a little bit of incentive to the investors and let's see what we can do to, to, to turn this around, okay? Next was is that it was actually created by what's called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. So at that time frame in 2017 was where, okay, it's being brought to, you know, Congress, it's being brought to the Treasury, and it's being voted upon and saying, okay, here's what we need to do. Now, it actually became knowledge about February 2018. Well, this is a pretty short period of time in which the IRS and the Treasury has to get together and start putting all the regulations together, okay? And, and it goes back to my very intro statement that said that 
during this period of time, throughout the you know February 2018, all through 2018, they were basically reaching out. And the reason that they were reaching out was they wanted for the general public to submit and they were going to take 150 questions to submit about what about this and what about that and what if I invest this way and what if I go here and what if I go there and they actually had had that all together and on February 10th of 2019 they were supposed to meet to try to get things finalized and it still hasn't been finalized so I just hope that right now that you guys are not invested in an opportunity zone or opportunity fund, you know, that, that, that there's still some unanswered questions. So I just, you know, ask you that, you know, to be cautious. Okay. Um, now the governors, okay. The treasury got together and went out to all 50 States and, and uh, they also went out to some other areas that were still U S territories and said, guys, you've got 90 days from December 22nd of 2017 to identify the census tracks. Well, interesting enough, of course, it didn't get all completed in 90 days and only 18 States had designated their areas by April 9th of 2018. So there was still more to come. Now, since then, they did. I mean, since then, everybody, all the governors, everybody got together and they went in and they started to, to identify a lot of the census tracts. Okay. So they were able to do that. And it was basically managed by the U.S. Department of Treasure and the Community Development Financial Institution Fund. So these are the people that decided to now, okay, we've got the Economic Innovation Group, they got this concept. Now let's get it created through the Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts. Let's get the governors involved and let's start identifying where these need to be. Okay. So next thing is, is that where are the opportunity zones located? Okay. So there are 8,761 communities in all 50 states, District of Columbia, and five U.S. territories. Now, I just popped up the map. I'm hoping that you guys can all see this. You know, I'd like to take just a brief moment. Anybody can give me a feedback right now. Are we doing good? Are we doing okay? Am I coming through loud and clear? Is the presentation clear to you? All right, Dan, thank you very much for that feedback. Awesome. So now, what we're going to do, guys, is that uh, when I set this up on my YouTube channel, and that's going to be up there tomorrow, I'm going to give you the link to this map, all right? And as you can see, that you have all these brown spots. Every one of those brown spots is an opportunity zone, okay? Now, it's based on the population census, census track, okay? That's low-income communities because that's where they're wanting to develop it and turn it around. And, and I can be honest, I can tell you guys, I, I don't know. I mean, of course, I'm from Denver, Colorado. I live in, I mean, excuse me, Loveland, Colorado. It's about an hour's north of Denver. Okay. And literally about another 15 minutes north of me is the city of Fort Collins. And that's where uh, CSU is. And what's interesting is, is that there's literally an opportunity zone that's in that town. So I, I do find it amazing and where they're at. So let's look a little bit closer. So now here is Colorado, and, and, and I talked about, you know, Fort Collins, there's Greedy, Longmont, Boulder, Denver, Colorado Springs, Grand Junction. I mean, you can see these areas. Now, in the link that you're going to get tomorrow, okay, is you're going to find that you can take this map you're going to you're going to be able to just literally get down to every street and and literally every you know potential single family home vacant land um uh businesses you're going to be able to zoom in so wherever you're from you know in fact you know what i'd like to do this take a moment each of you that have joined in and if you can let me see here um I'm going to let everybody be able to, to, to see it. Take a moment. Tell me what state and city you're from, if you could. 
type that into the chat box. Let us know where you're, where you're from. And, and, and I would appreciate that. Just go ahead and share where, where you're from, okay? So we got Dan from Fort Collins. We got uh, uh, Sarita from Jackson, um, Missouri. We got Grover from Lexington, Kentucky. Um, Dan uh, from Fayetteville, Georgia. Awful, awesome. Um, I, and now, uh, Maurice, I know you said you can't see the chat group. Um, you just got to go into your Zoom account and open it up. Uh, Don Baker, Erie, Colorado. Um, we got Oahu. We got Denver, uh, South Lake Tahoe. Great. Thanks, guys, for sharing that. Awesome. There we go. Maurice has got it on. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, and let's move on, all right? So the Opportunity Zones... Uh, this map is going to be linked there tomorrow, and you guys are going to be able to see, you know, you know, in your area, you know, where these are located, okay? All right, now here, I even zoomed in closer, okay? So I went into Denver, and again, I'm even showing more of these areas that are popping up that our governors went in and looked at that and said, hey, you know, these are all the areas. So I think you're going to be extremely, extremely excited once you start seeing where these opportunity zones are, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's move on, all right? So who can invest in an opportunity zone? Now this is going to be interesting. First off is individuals, you guys. You guys can invest in an opportunity zone. Now I talked a little earlier about what's called an opportunity fund. Now that's typically an organization that may be a hedge fund, that may be a REIT, or let me give you an example. Tony Spandrio goes out and creates a corporation through it being an LLC. I fill out all of the correct paperwork through the treasury department. I get it submitted and now I can receive funds into an opportunity fund. Okay, as an individual, and this isn't talked much, and again, check with your CPA, check with your attorney. Even as an individual, you can file so that you could take your own individual funds from a capital gains that you would get, okay, and that you can yourself go out and invest within an opportunity zone. What's next? corporations, including your REITs and your IRCs, they can go out because they're a corporation. They just have to file the necessary paperwork, okay? Who else can do this? Partnerships. That's the key, is an LLC needs to be set up as a partnership. Corporations have to be set up as a partnership when you're grouping people together to do this. What else? Common trust funds under Section 584. Okay, now guys, I could spend another another half an hour going through these. I, I highly recommend, go out and, and, and you can just Google these terms if you're not certain, well, what is a common trust fund under Section 584, Tony? And I could say, I could go into the definitions. Uh, that's getting out into the weeds, okay? So I, I really don't want to do that. Also, qualified settlement funds. Now, this has to do a lot with, you know, lawsuits and whatnot, and uh, you know, and, and going to court and whatnot, but there are qualified settlement funds that can invest in the opportunity zone, okay? Disputed ownership funds. Again, it's another way to invest in the opportunity zone, all right? And then you got other entities taxable under section 1.468, all right? Now, I think most of us here probably fall into the individual scenario. You're probably going to fall into investing into an opportunity fund through corporations and partnerships, that's probably where most of us are going to fit into, okay? But, you know, one of the things I heard the other day on, on a great uh, a video I was watching was, beware of the opportunity fund managers. I hope I'm not offending anybody here, but they're going to charge fees. So be careful of those fees, right? Be careful of the fees that they're charging. So if as long as it's reasonable to you and you're good with that, Okay, we're all right. Okay, so these are the people, these are the organizations, these are the ways that you can invest in an opportunity zone. All right, so what is the time period that you have to invest in? 
Now, again, as we're going on, you know, you've already heard me talk about in the very beginning what's going to happen come December 31st of 2026, okay? We got some time frames in here that we got to jump on this. And I think the thing that really surprises me the most is the fact that here we're trying that you know the, the the treasury they're trying to put this whole thing together they're trying to incentivize incentivize everybody to to get out here and invest in these opportunity zones okay and take some good you know you know you know tax gain and and tax deferrals and stuff and you'll you'll hear more about that here in a bit and and the, the interesting thing that i find about this is that it came out in 2018 they didn't have everything resolved I mean, you may go out and jump in to do something, and what if the IRS finally gets back together, the Treasury gets back together, and they get back together next month, and boom, what you invested in is disallowed. Now what do you do? Oh, gee, all of a sudden, I got to pay taxes on the capital gains I put in. I could have done a 1031 exchange. I'm not going to say this is going to happen. I'm not doom or gloom. I, I'm saying it's interesting that, you know, it's taking them time to get this done. But let's get into this, okay? What is the time period that I have to invest in an opportunity fund? Is that from the time you receive your capital gains from the sell of your investment, like stocks or real estate, which is, this is interesting, because you're gonna hear more about this here in a little bit about the difference between 1031 exchange and opportunity zones, it is different, but from the time you receive your capital gains from the sell of your investment, like stocks or real estate, you have 180 days to put it in to a qualified opportunity fund. That's the gains. Now, again, I'm going to get to it. I got lots of examples. Bear with me. Okay. So next is, is that a qualified opportunity fund is an investment vehicle that's being organized by a corporation. Remember in the earlier slide, I said, who can in invest in this? And, and corporations can put things together, partnerships, LLCs with partnerships, okay? With the special purpose of investing in Opportunity Zones assets, Oz assets, okay? Now here's the key, is as you go out and search for these Opportunity Funds, all right, and you're going to go, and they're going to be popping up. I'm sure there's plenty out there if you search, okay? The key, though, is, is that the opportunity fund that you're investing into, okay, that the funds must hold at least 90% of its assets in qualified, you know, ozone properties, in qualifying ozone properties, all right? So that's really key. Now, what's left? There's 10% left there. So the question that comes to mind is, is that, well, let's just say they raise a million dollars in one of these opportunity funds. What are they doing with that $100,000? Don't know. The questions you gotta ask before you jump into that. Again, guys, the one thing that I strive about in being a coach and a mentor is I love to teach, I love to train, and I love to bring up all of these things that says, you know what? It's something that we need to look into. It's really important. So that's your time period. Now, in a 1031 exchange, just real quickly, normally you got 45 days to identify a property and 180 days to invest in the property, okay, to close on it. Now, in an Oz property situation, you just got to get your funds, your capital gains, into that qualified opportunity funds within 180 days. Now we're gonna talk more about how long they have in which they've got to find a property, okay? All right, so that's what we got going on with the time period to invest. Let's move on, okay? Here's the key thing, all right? Qual qual opportunity zones versus 1031 exchanges, all right? So what we have here is a 1031 exchange. Now, many of you guys know this already. I'm sorry if I'm going to bore many of you, but a 1031 allows investors to defer, defer paying capital gains taxes on the sale of any property by reinvesting the proceeds into new property. Now, this process is sometimes called swapping. 
Now, a 1031 exchange allows an investor to preserve the gross equity earned from the real estate investment, which does increase their buying power over time, okay? But eventually, you're either going to, I'm sorry to say, die and pass it on to your, 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 your children or other people that you designate it to, or you're going to take a tax hit, okay? So that's, you know, what a little bit about, you know, the 1031 exchanges. And also, you know, it has to be a like-kind exchange. Now, opportunity funds. Now, they are investment vehicles that aim to invest at least 90% of their capital gains, okay, into a qualified opportunity zone. Now, by investing in an opportunity zone through a QOF, Qualified Opportunity Fund, investors may be able to defer, there's the thing guys, defer paying capital gains, okay, on the appreciated asset sales until December 31st of 2026. Now, you're deferring your capital gains and we're gonna get into this. Now, they are gonna be able to reduce their original capital gains tax liability up to 15%. Now that's the cool thing, all right? We are saying that you're going to be able to take some of that gains and not have to pay all the taxes on it. But that's the key, come December 31st of 2026, when you file your taxes in 2027, okay, depending upon when you buy a property, we haven't talked about that yet, okay? that there's gonna be some, some of those gains you're gonna pay. Now, what's really, really cool about the opportunity zone that we still haven't gotten into is the appreciation that you get within buying that property. And here's the key, you gotta hold it for 10 years. If you hold it for 10 years, you bought the property for $200,000 and it appreciated to $300,000, right? Normally, guys, you got $100,000 capital gains. In this case, as long as you hold it for 10 years, you will not pay taxes on that appreciation. Now, if you've got income coming in during that 10 years, I'm sorry, that is taxable. So if it is a flip and you're bringing in that money as passive income, it is still going to be taxable. All right, so let's take a look at this a little bit deeper, shall we? So 1031 exchange are like kind versus an opportunity fund, okay? So what about the rollover? So we talked about an investor must reinvest the principal and capital gains within 180 days of the sale. This transaction must be conducted through a qualified in a minute, in, intermediator in many instances. So like I'll use um, uh, IPX, and IPX is a, is, is a good uh, source that you go to for capital gains. I mean, for, for, for doing your, your exchange, okay? So first off, I gotta go to them, I gotta fill out the paperwork, I have to identify my properties in 45 days, and then I have to complete that transaction in, in 180 days, and it has to be like kind on the side of the opportunity fund investment. An investor must reinvest the capital gains only within 180 days of the sell to then a qualifying capital gains, okay, tax advantage. So that's a property. So what I'm saying there is, you have 180 days from the sale of your property that you're taking the capital gains on to get it into a QOF, okay, in order to take advantage of the capital gains. An investor is not required to roll over the entire gain. Now guys, I'm hoping you're understanding this and I'll try to explain it here is, all right, so let's say I bought, you know what, actually I have a slide coming in. Next couple slides, we're gonna see that actually explained. Basically what I'm saying here is, is that in a quick, quick two seconds, you buy a property for $200,000 and you put that money into it. A year later, you sell it for $300,000, you got $100,000 capital gains. You take that $100,000 capital gains and you put it into an opportunity fund. What happened to the extra, what happened to the original $200,000? Guys, you don't have to take that. 
you can roll that into something else, all right? That's the difference because a 1031, you got to reinvest the full $300,000 into another like-kind property, all right? So that's what's really, really important here. Now, an investor may place the opportunity fund investments in, in it directly, and there's no inter intermediary required. That's just really cool. You find an opportunity fund manager, somebody that's put an LLC together, corporation, they're a partnership, you can go directly to them because they filled out the necessary paperwork with the Department of Treasury to do that. All right, qualified assets. Next one down there at the bottom. Real estate only can qualify for a 10, that's supposed to be 1031. My bad, uh, I typed that in there, so I apologize. But the real estate can only qualify for a 1031 exchange, all right? As a qualified asset, on the Oz side, on the opportunity fund the investment side, capital gains from the sale of real estate or another investment can qualify for an opportunity fund. It's not, it's not absolutely like like kind, right? We're talking about, oh, I've got stocks, okay? I've got real estate, okay? So again, there's a lot of things out there that, that you can be able to, to move it to, you know, and, and buying, buying, uh, a single family home, um, a land, uh, a business, um, um, you know, apartment complex. All right, so let's move on. All right, so what is an investment structure? Let's look at the two as an investment structure. 1031 like kind exchange. This is designed for single asset swaps. Multiple properties can be supported through certain structures, which I have done, but this option usually comes with a high cost. Fees not feed, but fees and general and flexibility. The other thing about, you know, when we look at now comparing that to an opportunity fund, this can support a pooled funds that invest in multiple assets. That's right. Like I said earlier, they could put together literally an opportunity fund of $5 million, $10 million, and they could pool the money and get multiple assets. So that's a really, really cool thing, okay? All right, next item, capital gains tax deferral. All right, as a 1031 like can exchange, capital gain taxes payments or the initial investments may be deferred indefinitely. Well, indefinitely until either the day you die or you decide to shut everything down and now pay taxes later, okay? Where on the opportunity fund investment, the capital gains deferral, the tax payments on capital gains of the initial investment may be deferred until December 31st of 2026. So again, guys, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into that. All right. Hope you guys are with me so far. Let's keep moving on. What other 1031 exchanges versus opportunity funds can we look at? Capital gains tax reduction with a 1031 like kind exchange. There are no capital gains reductions in the availability except through stepped up basis upon death. What do we mean by that? Okay, today I bought a property for $100,000. 20 years from now, this property sells for a million dollars. And I wind up and I die. So what happens is, is that when this gets transferred over to, you know, whoever I've designated it through, through my estate, through my will or whatever, that $1 million is now considered the stepped up basis. And if they sell it for a million dollars, they don't have to pay taxes. I think mo most everybody understands that and knows that. So everybody with me so far, can I, can I get maybe a, 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 just a little bit of feedback here? If you can, let me know that we're, we're still doing good here. You guys can hear me. I can take a drink of water while, you know, I can just get a little bit of feedback from you. I, I would greatly appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Very good. All right. So let's continue on. Capital. Okay, so capital gains tax reduction. So on the opportunity fund, it, we indicate that the capital gains tax on the initial investment is reduced by 10%, okay, after five years and another 5% after seven years through stepped up basis. In total, you're basically going to see about a 15%, not about, you're only going to see a 15% reduction is possible. But that is as long as an investor invests by December 31st of 2019. This is what I said earlier. 
I'm surprised that they put this thing together and there's what, 8,700 different opportunity zones that they're trying to get this set up with. And yet the time frame is so short for all of us to do it. It's crazy. But, but you know, and, and you'll see as we, we go on here. All right, let's keep moving on, okay? Capital gains tax on final sale. Basically, on a final sale, as we talked about earlier, unless you die, uh, 1031 exchange, an investor owns capital gains on the final sale of the asset. Now, that's huge. Now, in an opportunity fund investment, in the investment, okay, if this is held for at least 10 years, the the you know the 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 investor can expect to owe no capital gains on the appreciation that's on the appreciation okay of the initial opportunity fund investment upon the sale of that investment so and, and basically what i'm saying here guys is that the previous box up above does say that on your capital gains for what you sold in order to put into the opportunity zone you're going to get a 10% or a total of 15% reduction in that capital gains tax. But the gains that you make on appreciation, you, you the, there isn't anything on that. There is no taxes on that. That's why they're trying to get this incentive out there. Okay? All right, let's move on, all right? So, understanding deferral capital gains. So, here we go. So, I know I'm reiterating this, but I want to make certain it's clear to you guys. The capital gains you invest are not forgiven. It's deferred, folks. All right? Again, that may be an eye-opener. I sell something that I, cre I, I gained $100,000 in today. I, come December 31st of 2026, depending upon what I do, if I, if I hold it for 10 years, okay, um, uh, uh, and, and or I hold it for at least seven years, okay, because we're in 2019, all right, I'm still going to pay taxes. It's just being deferred. So like I said here on the next box, after the first five years, your capital gain basis will receive a 10% basis reset. I'm going to give you an example. Don't worry. We'll look at some numbers here. After seven years, you'll receive another 5%, giving you a total of a 15% reset in your basis. Okay, and that's a key thing, seven years. Now, as I've been talking through this, if we're in 2019 and I need to get the full 15% benefit of getting my basis reset so I don't have to pay as much in taxes on the capital gains, I better hurry up and invest, right? Because seven years from now, it's gonna be 2026. And after 2026, Guys, you have to pay that deferred that, that deferred taxes on the capital gains you, that you invested with. You're going to be paying it. You are going to be paying it, okay? So, sorry to say that. That's, that's, that's the truth of the matter here, okay, that you guys just need to understand. I think there, there's good benefits here. Don't get me wrong. I really do. All right. Understanding deferral capital gains. Here we go. As a taxpayer with capital gains, you can elect to defer the gain from the sell or exchange of a capital access as long as you reinvest it into a QOF, Qualified Opportunity Fund, okay? Now, the investment must be made within 180 days of the sale, and the gain is deferred until the earlier of either the sell or exchange of the QOF investment or December 31st of 2026. So if you were to sell it sooner, you may only be able to qualify for no, no gain. If you sold it before five years, you're not gonna get any deferral. I mean, I mean you're not gonna get, get, get any reset of your basis. If you wait five years, good, you get 10%. You wait seven years, which you gotta hurry up and invest. We've only got 10 months left. <laughs> you know, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get the full 15%. Okay. Now, if the QOF investment is held for at least five years, you can reduce your original gain amount by, by 10%. If the QOF is held at least seven years, you can reduce the original gain by 15%. Okay. Now, if the investment is held for 10 years, any gain, i.e. the appreciation from the sale of the investment can be excluded from taxable income. Okay. 
So it all depends on where you're gonna to want to be investing. All right, so here's an example. In 2019, you sell for $300,000 a rental property that you originally purchased for $200,000. Your capital gains amount is $100,000, right? Now, that's fine, but within 180 days of that sale, you've got to get it invested, that's the $100,000 gains, into a qualified opportunity fund within 2019, if you're gonna take advantage of this whole thing, all right? So there's your example. Now, now let's look at the numbers. So in, in, the, in the qualified opportunity fund, it's held for five years, and let's say it's sold in 2024 for $150,000 and you included in your 2024 tax, uh, taxable income that you're gonna take a 10% deferral or basis reset. So of the $100,000 capital gains you invested, only 90,000 would become taxable gain, okay? So yeah, you're, you're, you're getting a 10% off of that by holding it five years. But that's 2026, all right, or earlier. So if you only waited five years, that's all you can get. Let's say that you held it for seven years. And now let's say you did sell it in 2026 for $180,000, all right? You would include in the 2026 taxable income a 15% reset in your basis, a deferral. That means that now the $100,000 that you invested is now going to be at 85,000 is gonna be your taxable gain, income, uh, taxable gain okay? So, so that's what we're saying there, all right? Now, if you hold it for 10 years and you bought it sometime in 2019, and let's say you did, let's say you sold it in 2029, 10 years from now, for $200,000. So what did you get? You got $100,000 in appreciation gain that is excluded from your taxable income for 2029. But the $100,000 capital gain that you invested in this year in 2019, and you kept it for that 10 years, right? But come December 31st of 2026, you're still gonna be paying capital gains on $85,000. The $100,000 is getting reset, the basis is getting reset by 15%, okay? So this is where I start looking at it and saying, 1031 versus this. Well, there's, there, 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 there's, Two things that point out to me here that's that's really cool. And of course, if big corporations start getting into this and they start taking their sale, what if you had bought an Apple stock and you bought it for you know, you know, 10 cents and today it was worth a thousand dollars. But what if you had bought you know ten thousand shares at 10 cents? And you think about the capital gains that you got and how huge that could be. I mean, think outside the box how huge this could be for some big corporations and, and whatnot, right? So I look at this and say, okay, two things is, two things are happening versus a 1031 exchange. Yep, um, I'm still having to pay taxes, but I'm only having to pay taxes on the 85,000. And by the way, where am I gonna be at in five, seven, or 10 years down the road when I do have to pay that taxes? Where, what's gonna be my tax bracket? Got to think about that, right? But the cool thing is, is that if I can hold out for 10 years, that the $100,000 gain, I'm not having to pay taxes on it. That's pretty sweet, right? But also think about the original $200,000 that you invested prior to selling what you had in the property for capital gains this year. You got to use that $200,000 and reinvest it again. So, it has just brought up so many questions for me to ask attorneys that it's just, it's endless. I mean, I think about, I think about, well, what if I invested with a Roth? What if I invested with an IRA? Or, you know, what are all the things that I can use? What are all the different vehicles I can use? So it's pretty cool stuff, all right? Let's, let's keep moving on. What kind of investments are allowed? Well, obviously, Existing real estate properties like single family residence or commercial apartment complexes. Now remember, when you're looking at the map and you're going into this, right? That's something to look at. What's in these areas? The other thing is, is that what's called original use property, like land to be developed from the ground up, okay? So that's something else to consider. 
And next is a trade or a business and maybe buying that within an opportunity zone. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, is just really super exciting. I mean, I know in, my, in the market in Tulsa where I've got nine houses already, I mean, I look at this area and I'm just thinking, wow, you know, you know there could be some really great opportunities that you know, I, I could maybe sell stuff that I have and, and reinvest it that way. But let's dig into this a little deeper, shall we? So let's talk a little bit more about existing real estate properties like single family rentals and commercial apartment complexes. All right, they must substantially improve the property over 30 months. So here's what we're saying. When, 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 they, when, the, when the treasury got together, IRS got together, they said substantially improve. What they mean by that is, let's say that whether it's you individually, you went out to the treasury department, you got the paperwork and you took your capital gains and you invested in, in this, or you used an opportunity fund, and now the opportunity fund has to do this. Let's use easy numbers. I invested $100,000 into that opportunity fund. What do they mean by substantially improve the property over 30 months? That means that I have to put $100,000 more into it plus a dollar. That's what they mean by substantially improve. Okay? So that means you've got to think about where else does that money come from? Okay? So as you're building everything up, all right, keep that in mind. That's, that's what has to happen. I mean, that they're just... They're dead set on this. They want you to improve the area, and that's what they mean, okay? So that's what I'm saying here. The amount of the improvement must be greater than the adjusted gross basis. If you invested $100,000 in an SFR into an Oz area, you must spend another $100,000, okay, plus a dollar in improving the property. So again, guys, I see a couple errors I've made in this presentation. I apologize. That equals is supposed to be a plus sign. So I apologize. We'll get that fixed. All right. So what else? Original use property, land to be developed from the ground up. All right. So here's a little snippet. Okay. And again, you guys are going to get this and you can go back and read it again. Land is not likely to qualify under the original use standard under the opportunity zone statutes. Okay. Therefore, land will likely need to be substantially improved to qualify. Land may qualify as substantially improved properties through a sufficient amount of new construction. Hello, of course, we got land. We want to build on it. Or through a substantial improvement of maybe an existing building that's located on the land. However, it is likely that only the portion of the land that is integral to the business using such improvements will qualify. So they really don't look at the land. So you bought a piece of land for $100,000. That's not really part of the investment into Oz. What it's going to be is the building that you're either building on it, constructing on it, or the building that may, it may be on there that's dilapidated and torn down that you're going to improve, okay? So again, guys, there's lots, lots here to, to, to learn and understand. Let, let's keep moving on, okay? So, we talked about a trade or business property as being something to invest in. Let's look at that. Now, here's an interesting fact. I'll try to make this as clear as mud. Not really. <laughs> I won't try to get into the weeds with this, but at least 50% of the gross income has to come from Oz. Here, let me give you an idea. You were looking on the map and you found a commercial building that was vacant and you said, oh, I know what I could do. I could take and maybe put a linen business in that area and I can create a linen business just as, you know, you guys can, can be creative in any way, but hear me out. And you're gonna get a fleet of trucks and you're gonna send out this linen business to all of these other businesses to provide them with linen services. 50% of your gross income has to come within that opportunity zone where your business is that you just bought. So that means that you've got to verify, in order for this to qualify, you gotta verify that 50% of your gross income has come within the opportunity zone. It's like, wow. 
okay? Now, obviously, if you invested in a single family rental and you've got a tenant in there and that tenant is paying, well, obviously, they're, they're living in that area, right? So that, that's okay. Same thing with an apartment complex. But a trade or business property, and there's plenty of them out there. Uh, here, let's use this as an example. You had a nail salon. Put up a nail salon in an opportunity zone, and now you're generating 50% of the income from everybody else that lives in the opportunity zone. Makes sense, right? That works. So just an idea for you, you to ponder, right? So a substantial portion of the intangible property must be used in the active conduct of business, okay? So again, here's a lot of things that still need to be refined that our lovely government needs to definitely address. And, and guys, there's still no date set on when they're gonna meet and make this decision. I mean, I checked on it last week. There's still no date set, okay? Now, less than 5% of the average of the aggregate unadjusted basis of the property, such as the entity is attributed to non-qualified financial property, okay? Again, this is just some of the stuff that when you start getting into Oz, Opportunity Zone, sounds great, but there's a lot of little things. You know, if you guys want also, and I know that you all have access to me, is reach out to me. I can send you the 75-page report from the IRS of all the statutes and everything that you can get as bored as I did and sit down and read this stuff and realize that it's still not complete, okay? All right. And here's the other key, that business cannot be a sin business. What do I mean by sin business? It can't be a golf course, country club, massage parlor, hot tub facility, a suntan facility, racetrack, casinos, or liquor stores. That's a sin business. Now, here's an interesting thing. I was watching a video the other day. Well, what about buying a commercial property as a grow house? in areas that are legal. I mean, has that been defined yet? Is that a sin business? So again, guys, I love to spur on thought here and let you guys kind of go through this and say, okay, interesting stuff. How much more do we want to pursue this? So what's going to happen on December 31st of 2026? Now guys, we've been talking about it, so you kind of know we're getting near the end here. Opportunity zones are designed to spur on economic development by providing tax benefits to the investors. Is this going to last forever? No, it's not, unless they decide to change it, but we are waiting to hear to see, right? Capital gains used are only deferred until December 31st of 2026. We've been down that. We went through the slides. You hold it for five years, you can get a 10% basis reset. You hold it for seven years, you can get a 15% basis reset. Great, but tell you what, man, the tax man's going to come when you're filing your returns in 2027 for 2026. They're going to want to be paid, okay? If the investment in a qualified opportunity zone is sold or exchanged before December 31st of 2026, then the following is going to happen, right? If it's held for five years, but you sell it come the sixth year, you're only going to get 10%. It's going to be reset, all right? If you hold it for seven years or more, but you sell it before 2026, you, you're still gonna get the, the 15%. But here's the key. If you sell that property before five years, zip, zero, none, you're gonna pay capital gains on that full capital gain investment, right? But if you sell this before the 10 years, now you're going to be paying capital gains on the appreciation. You have to hold it for 10 years, okay? I think I've driven that home enough. Let's go ahead and move on. An investor cannot invest deferred capital gains after December 31st of 2026. Why would you? Think about that. I mean, guys, uh, if I can take advantage of a full 15%, then... Why am I even going to wait until this time frame? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get zipped, zero, nothing. And that's why I'm saying is, is that um, it's going to be important to think about. I'm on a time clock. I got 10 months. If I want to get into an opportunity zone, hey, I want to do this. Now, guys, I want to reach out to you and let you know is that I would be open. I'd be open to share 
and work with you guys. If anybody wants to put something together and we want to put a group together, we want to think about doing this. Hey, I'm there. I, I, I would love to work with us on us. It's just, you know, it's going to be critical that when you go out and you start looking at that map, here's the thing. We cannot guarantee, we cannot guarantee that you're going to make a killing on this. What if you do get into an opportunity zone area and it tanks economy changes, whatever happens in that market, you don't do the research, right? It could be serious. You could walk away not having any appreciation, okay? You could walk away and not get a thing. So it's going to be important that you're going to find the right place to invest in, all right? So I'm there for you guys. I want you to know. So let's just go ahead and move on. Um, you know, no matter what, you're going to have to pay that deferred tax amount one way or another. Just want you to be aware of that. They don't give us a total free ride, but it's still a pretty good ride, right? So let's just do a quick recap. We're, we're, we're winding up here. We've just been at about an hour. We went over what the Opportunity Zone is all about, what and when it got created. We went over the background. We talked about how it was thought about back in 2015 and how the Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts came about, and they initiated things in 2017, kicked it off in 2018, okay? We talked about where they're located. Again, guys, is that, um, you know, let's see here. Uh, if you guys can can bear with me just, just a moment here. I'm going to see here if we can, if I can do this here real quick, okay? What I'm wanting to do is I'm going to, put a link in the chat box for everybody to get. And if you can grab that link, you know, um, so let's see here. Um, yep, yep, this is it, okay. I'm gonna grab this here. And let me go ahead and just like I say, bear with me, okay. All right, so, so there you go. Um, you know what, I need to set this up to everybody. I apologize, I just realized that I put this in here. There we go. Okay. If you guys let me know, has it, did everybody get that link in the chat box? All right. Just, just kind of give me some feedback. Let me know. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Good, 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 good. So you got that link there. <clears throat> now you should be able to click on that link and go out there. And when you go to that page, okay. And you're going to see, it says, uh, it's, it's the, and here you are. It's the economic innovation group, right? And it talks about the map. When you go there, you just scroll down. Now, if you go and you click on that map, okay, on that site, and it's going to come up, and now this is an interactive map. So if you guys are doing this, if you guys are with me, check it out, man. Do this and go to your area and find one of those opportunity zones and just use your map. Just keep scrolling in, right? And you just keep kind of scrolling in. And, and, and you get to see where it's at. Now, I've got a good friend of mine that's on the line here, uh, Maurice. So, Maurice, uh, I'm actually going to go down by, by the Columbus area here um, and, and just see. I wanted to see if there's anything in, in your area. And, and uh, Maurice, I know I'm pulling you out here in Auburn. I could go into Auburn there, and um, I, I can keep zooming in right? And it gets down to the maps. So in Auburn, let's see, here's East Glen Avenue, right? And I can click on there and it tells me there is the medium household income in this census track in Lee County is 30,462. There's a total population of 6,208 people. Households in pro pro poverty, 27%. Total job. This thing is just it's huge, guys. This this map is just absolutely huge. As investors, guys, this is really awesome. Has anybody been able to, to, to click on that? You know, give me some feedback if you're able to, to find that and click on it, all right? This is uh, pretty cool stuff. All right, let's, let's wrap some things up here, okay? Um, so, um, uh, so we covered who can invest in the Opportunity Zones. You as individuals. You can do this, and you can put your money into an opportunity fund, okay? And, and uh, all right, so let's move on. Um, we went over the time period, 180 days, all right? We have 180 days to go out there and 
uh, and, and invest, right? Um, we went over the differences between opportunity zones versus the 1031 exchange, okay? And then, uh, you know, we, we went through, we just, they nailed the, the, the understanding of the deferral of, of capital gains and what's gonna happen and what you're gonna have to pay for, okay? We talked about the different types of investments that are allowed, single family homes. We talked about apartment complexes. It can be land, and obviously it can be a trade or a business, uh, you know, and we can do that also, right? And then we talked about, well, what's gonna happen on December 31st? So guys, I, I mean, there is so much more out there. I mean, you could spend hours and hours and hours on end, but I really wanted to get out here and share this stuff. I thought it was really great stuff. So guys, you know, uh, you know, here's what I'm offering tonight is that I've got my book, Cash Flow Essentials, The Ultimate Guide to Real Estate Investing. And you know, you can go out to Amazon, you can get that for 1995. No, not 1996. See, I'm seeing if you guys are awake. It's 1995. And you can get the book. I wrote it back in June of 2015. And it is absolutely, you know, a phenomenal book. I'm very blessed to, to have taken the time. It took, you know, almost two years to write the book. Um, and uh, if, if you're looking at, at understanding cash flow, uh, this thing is, is key, uh, absolutely key. So, guys, get out there. Go to Amazon and order that book today, all right? Get that book. And here's a little bit more about me and how to get a hold of me. Now, I'm going to leave this here on the screen uh, before we wrap things up. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody coming out and, and, and joining in the webinar. And for those of you that have listened to the playback, I appreciate that. Um, you, know, you know, give me some, you know, just give me some likes and some, some thumbs up and everything. Uh, share this. Share this with everybody that you can think of that might be interested in this. Um, now, you know, I do offer uh, a lot of coaching. Uh, I, I'm actually, I got a special going on right now that we can do a 20 minute business session for $97. And uh, we, we can sit and talk and strategize about your business and where you're at. Um, you're gonna find a lot of freebies on my uh, website. So go out to cashflowessentials.com. Um, uh, there, there's just, uh, I offer just a ton of stuff. I just, in, thoroughly enjoy sharing like I did tonight. You can reach out to me with my email. It's tspandrio at securerei.com. Please feel free to reach out to me if you've got any additional questions, okay? Now, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, you can just do a search on Facebook for me. I, I'm the older one, I'm the old guy out there, okay? My sons, my grandkids that are Tony, Tony Spandrio Jr. and Tony the Third and whatnot, they're out there, so just look for the old guy. LinkedIn also, uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, the other thing that I, I didn't put in here, but was, uh, again, we talked about it earlier, is this is all gonna be available if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, okay? Go to YouTube, do a search for Tony Spandrio. Once you find me, subscribe to my channel. Guys, I have Motivational Mondays, 9 a.m. every Monday, Mountain Standard Time. We talk about motivation things. I get you going for the week. Wednesdays, Right now, Opportunity Zone Wednesdays. What's coming up down the road is gonna be Wealth Wednesdays. And we're gonna be having the Wealth Wednesdays. And, and, and these are just 10, 15 minute segments, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, okay, Wednesdays. Thursdays, Thursday is Tactical Thursdays. Right now, we're in the middle of a, of a flip. Guys, I am sharing everything. On, on the ins and the outs and how to have your butt covered when you're doing flips from the time you close title to the time you're gonna put it on the market, okay? And you're gonna find all these videos on my YouTube channel, all right? Friday is Fruitful Friday. I love to share everybody's successes and goals. Not me, you. You get the time to share your successes for the week and your goals for the week. So guys, do reach out, do follow me on Facebook. If you do need to get a hold of me, here's my office number, 970-292-6751, okay? And, you know, again, I encourage you guys, go out, buy my book, Cash Flow Essentials, Ultimate Guide to Real Estate Investment. It's only 1995, guys. It, it's really great. Amazon, get it, get it shipped to you, uh, you know, in no time. Well, guys, I super appreciate everybody that joined in for this webinar. 
And guys, I just, I look forward, many of you I know, many of you that I've met, and many of you that I haven't. I hope this has been very informational for you tonight. And again, please share this once you see it out there on um, you know, my YouTube channel, okay? You guys have a marvelous evening. I know many of you are on the East Coast, and it's late, but thank you for joining me. Greatly appreciate it, and just make it a, a phenomenal rest of the week. Have a great weekend. Guys, we will talk to you later. Take care now. Bye-bye.